journey there there's just like oh my god like one two three events i, I noticed that you um uh you um you you grew up and um uh you talk about your childhood days school uh some other things that i that i thought that i saw in that um about child abuse in school i i saw um, that in the book um i also saw that you got saved when you were only like five years old Yes. Um, give us a little bit of synopsis of the five-year-old young girl becoming a Christian, and yes. and tell me a little bit of, a little bit more about the, the child abuse that you noticed and actually experienced some of it. Oh, with pleasure. Um, you know, going to to school in in Jamaica. Actually, this was your team, and. Um, Oh, I always hate to talk about it. Just, you know, like when you're not um, an A student in your teacher's eyes um, and you just couldn't do anything right. And, um, you know, during that time, passing your common entrance was of high importance. Mm -hmm. So you had to know certain things. And if you didn't know, be sure there was this one specific teacher who beat um, so much that blood splattered. And I know that I mentioned in the book that I wonder where on earth she is at this time, because I would have loved for her to see um, the young lady that I am today and just to let her know that what she had done wasn't, um, wasn't the way to go, wasn't the way to go. So, okay, so, so some of those teachers took advantage or disadvantage of, of the children who weren't progressing as fast yeah. as um you know I, I, well but here you are today uh, yeah. beating beating all those odds beating all those odds. beating yeah. all those odds all right all right so um so tell me tell me as you as you grew up uh, uh tell me about the um you getting saved at age five, becoming a Christian yeah. at age five. I, I, but I, you know, and as my wife said, you know, that's just plain evil. Like, I can't even, I can't even imagine that teachers were were spanking kids until they were bleeding. I, I, I don't know. Um, that that is real abuse. But yes. but but here you are today. Here I am today. Um, you know, just making it, and just I was totally happy. You couldn't learn in such an environment. That wasn't an environment of learning because you were mostly scared of what will happen if you are not, um, you know, successful or understand what's being taught. So mm -hmm. it was really about fear at that time. So they would put the fear of somebody said the fear of God in you, you know, if you're not, um, you know, getting what's being taught. So yes, and one of the worst things for me is that it's acceptable behavior. You might have changed now. But during that time, it seemed as if you could go to school and be, you know, just get that beaten, and, and you need to learn. Just learn what's being taught of you. So for me, that was really something that that stayed with me. Like, how could that be? How could parents um, accept that kind of behavior, even when being told by their kids, you know, and see for themselves because the the marks were there. Yeah, I noticed you said that, and that that unfortunately that was uh, uh, how parent normally dealt with things back then. They just thought the teachers were always right, or your people in your neighborhood was all they were, they were always right, uh, yes. and and they always think the kids was the kids were the were the bad people, yes. and so they allowed the abuse to continue without any uh, any redress, um, and so people expanded on that um uh so tell me tell me about you know growing up in church wow. the young christian I, i've seen some of that in the story uh what it has been like um the battles you had to fight uh the the the, the legalism and the the struggles and mm -hmm. the uh culture give us a little bit of synopsis of that as you as you grew up and what the experience the experiences were for you you know um as my book goes on it tells you about age five when i gave my heart to the lord and someone may say at age five you gave your heart to the lord but it was just i never forget that saturday evening um, many of us in the island of jamaica we know that uh, reverend vb 
I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Oh, that. Reverend VB. That was one of our favorite guys. We listened to him all the time. Yes, so he plays these really nice songs in the evening, you know, while you're home doing chores, you'll hear him playing these wonderful gospel songs. And that specific evening, I was outside with my with my siblings, you know, playing and doing jump rope, whatever it is that we do at that time. And mom and dad, they were playing the song. They were they were playing the um the radio. And this song came on. Hurry up. Hurry oh, up. that that was one of his favorite songs. Hurry up, get Hurry ready to up, go. Get ready to go. And for some reason, it's like an out of body experience. And I and I remember that I started crying. And they were telling me, like, you know, like they look at me and say, Oh, stop that, stop that. What are you doing? You're you're pretending. You you know, you know how children are. Yeah. And and um it was from then that song changed my life at that age, at that time and that moment. It was like an out of body experience. I remember when I said to mom and dad, I I want to get baptized. They said, No, you're too young. Yeah. <laughs> How many times? How many times have we heard that from parents and adults that we're too young? Yes, uh, you know they said I was too young, but I said no. I am determined. I am giving my heart to the Lord, and um, and it's you know like when I when the morning, the Sunday morning when I got up to go for the baptism, I dressed in my little my little white dress and. You know how we tie your head with that white and walk over a mile to to that that water to go with them. Four others of my friends, I never forget them. You know, we baptized together. The water was cold. Really Norm cold. normally, <laughs> the water was really cold. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's 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 un it's unforgettable. Well, you know how God has kept me. He has kept me all these years. Um, not not perfect. I'm not perfect by any means. Uh, fallen short, but thank God, He has seen it fit to, um, you know, He kept me when I fall. He picked me up. You know, uh, that is kind of the the fundamental testimony of most of us that we stumble and we fall, and um, and we give God thanks for the advocacy of Christ and the wisdom of God, who doesn't um, uh, leave us down when we fall. He lifts us up when we fall because He has made provision for that, uh, and I, and I wish that all of us would get to the the understanding of how mercy and grace works. Um, because I think you, you've talked about some of those hardcore experiences. Some of the, there were, there were more don'ts than do's yes. in, in those, in those early Christian days. And I, I noticed that you even made mention of, of the church name itself that we were part of, that we were part of <laughs> back, back in those, uh. in, the, in those young days. Um, Give 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 the friends who who not who can't haven't experienced uh, those kind of hard line hardcore uh, no leverage uh, intolerance you know uh, kind of uh, church mothers and fathers who 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 would not give you any room uh, with any flexibility it was just cut dry hardcore. Yes, this this one especially it leaves such a indelible mark on me. Um, from a young child, I've been singing and going with um, you know with with our church to different places, rallies, and different events to sing. And I quite remember that afternoon, I got dressed to go to one of the many rallies, and um, I had. I had just a little bit of my hair showing and with this Garbadine hat. I don't know if anybody knows those kind oh, of hats. Oh, no, those Garbadine. Oh, we know them. We've been there, done that. <laughs> the Garbadine hat with those little pleats on it. Oh, Lord, have so, mercy. And when my pastor saw me, she slapped my face so hard and oh, wow. pushed my hair under. 
says, you're turning into a woman. You're turning wow. into a woman. I cried so hard. And, and you know, they, they, used to, they normally tell you that you're pretending to be growing up. <laughs> like, yeah, and that turning into a woman kind of thing is like, okay, you're, you're, you're coming out of the culture and you're adding yes. your, you know, I, I, I remember those things. I, I remember those things. Those, those um, things. I mean, she, she, she really slapped me and she slapped my face because, you know, young as we are, we always have like, what? This is something, because I thought, you know, that little piece showing, just a little piece, because, of course, I grew up in, um, you know, the church where you had to wear the long skirt, you couldn't wear the pants, uh, you couldn't wear the earring, you couldn't have um, permed here, stuff like that. So it was a little, um, you know, for them, for her to really slap me so hard that Sunday afternoon really tell me how you know we uh, how far we have come wow we've come a long way that's that's amazing that's amazing uh, my friends i'm talking to v marcia blair that's who i'm talking to tonight a friend of ours as a matter of fact i should have i should have said that from the beginning uh, and maybe she wouldn't say that or maybe come to the point of saying that's one of my daughters that's one of my my wife and my and, and and me our daughters one of our daughters that we have known for as i said since 1980 79 80 there about and 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 our relationship has never broken um even though we kind of had a gap where we didn't know where each other's were I, but to, but we, we we got it mended i want to i want to mention something uh mom said she's your daughter <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's my daughter. Okay, she's my daughter. You should, you're your daughter too. So we 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 show ownership. <laughs> you know, I remember going to to Dintu, and I usually like just pack my bags and go all straight to Salisbury Plain, and spend the weekend right with you guys. That's I like, remember, oh. I remember that too. <laughs> Those were really the good days. You know, just going straight and stay for the weekend and then go right back to serve to you know the school i'm telling you we wow. really have come a long way come a long way god bless you and we are glad to i am i am delighted to be talking to you tonight despite of everything which we will come to some of those things tonight where we could not project and see happen down the road mm -hmm. what life would bring to us mm -hmm. um I, I saw something that is fascinating that well you know, fascinating but but caught my eye there's so many things and let me say as matter of we're, we're gleaning from her book i must say that we're gleaning from a book that is called chosen you can see it behind her shoulder chosen chosen and that's what the title of her book is i i started to read this and it's not a hard read but it's a it's a it's a riveting read I, I I read it one night while I was on my on the cruise and and I went to bed like I went to sleep about four thirty in the morning just couldn't let go the book couldn't let go the book it was there's too much to glean from it and um but tell me tell me I, I want you to tell me a little bit about um this illness from a dirty strainer yes tell 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 us about that 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 experience uh what what was that like how did that happen. Well, I was very young anyway, so most of it is what was told to me by, um, by my mom. That almost took me out. That almost took me out. Uh, I think it, my tea was strained from something, from a dirty strainer, yes. And whatever it did, it caused me to almost lost my life. Wow almost lost my life. How, I was, old, how old were you then? I was very young, very, I was very, very young. But I was young, like, um, as my, my mom told me what happened, because I, okay. I was so sickly. Mm -hmm. And from that, I grew up to be like a very sickly child. Very so, you, sickly so child. you think that had a, that a long lasting effect on your health? I, I think so. I really yeah. do, because um, the, the, the way, uh, you know, I... My mommy told me because she, she told me that always burning up with fever, always sickly, always sickly, you know. But I'm telling you, God is good. When God chose you, no matter what you go through. At what at what point did that cycle of 
being sick broke because I don't I don't remember when we when we got to know you uh, as a young lady that you were I don't think you were sickly we know another sister who was sickly but you weren't sickly right. then right um I think um it it broke about when I went into all age school and in all age school in Jamaica I think that was about um how old was that in the in the 13 about that time yes And um, you know, but I I I know it just here and I know and I could feel like the heat always with this high temperature and uh, you know, mom would work and work and work. You know, so I quite understand why why my dad would even get so frustrated, you know. Mm -hmm. Really got frustrated. But uh but to God be the glory, things work out for my good. You know, you you talk about you talked about um uh the relationship between your your mom and dad the mom was just you know as good as a mom could be but but the, but there was a difference between you and your and the relationship between your dad um what can you tell us about that synopsis that you can recall um that caused you to struggle and um and and I noticed that you said in your book that you have tried you have tried to gain your dad's affection Uh, just reading that breaks my heart you know yeah. just tell me tell us about what was that like and why because it seemed like as you said in the book that um seemed like you were like the odd child at least the treatment felt like you were the odd child how did you come up with that conclusion well i i did feel like the, the odd child but my dad was he was he was a very very good man a very very good man but at that age i didn't felt loved at all at, at all and um, i always say you know like i'll say to mom i'm so thankful that i know that she loved me unconditionally but you know as you read on in the book you will notice the transformation between my dad and i eventually uh, which, which is awesome but yeah. but but at first i think um i You know what I always say to myself? <laughs> well, maybe it's because I'm uh, the Cinderella story. So I'm, the, I'm like the, I, I'm always the darkest one in my family. Really? Yes, I, I, yes, I, I'm the darkest one in my family. So in my head, and mind you, nine siblings, nine different mind. We all think differently, right? Mm -hmm. We all think differently. And, and, um, very caring you know he's very caring but i didn't feel it i didn't feel it i did i didn't feel it i i always i always wonder so most times i'll keep to myself and i usually spent most of my time at underneath the orange tree i'm always singing i'm always trying to do something different so, so you know just to be For my peace of mind. So then you say was your your dad was a good man. So so my wondering is, was it was it out of maybe jealousy because a child normally wants it all, you know, uh, yeah, give it to me, and seeing it going to others if it's spread around, could it be that? You're, you're feeling like, okay, by the time it goes around the circle and come back, it takes too long to get to you. Was that, was that real? Was it, that's an assessment or was it that, was that for real? Um, I, I don't know if that's the, if that's the case, but I, I just know that um, when I was younger, my dad and I just didn't, we didn't just didn't get along for some, for some unknown reason. Uh, but, but, you know, looking at everything, If you speak to all of my siblings, we all have a different story. Our stories are different. But that was me. That, that was just me and how I felt. So I would rather go away, you know, because um, cause where I can feel the love and, and so on. But, but, you know, but as I said, things did change. But at that time, at that time, Okay, so I, I I noticed that you know things change by the time you got married, which we'll get to that at some point. 
um, because uh, you know you were you were so filled with joy when he walked you uh, down the aisle. So you have mended the brokenness and the that, that, uh, you know that was the, that was the best thing ever when my dad walked me down the aisle. When I, I held on to him so tight, uh, you know, and um, when I left Jamaica, when I went back, it, it, nobody could pick me up at the airport but my dad. Okay. All no, right. Nobody. Because once I'm coming and he knows he's coming, he's coming right there for me. Amen. You know. So, you know, I'm I'm glad how things just change. And and um and he he's a, he, he was a kind, a really kind man. But as, as I said, you know, that's how I, I felt at that time. And when he walked me down the aisle, he came up for my wedding. Great. And one of the most beautiful stories, he gave his heart to the Lord the Sunday after. I I noticed I noticed that too. I noticed that too. And that, and that's the that's the beautiful part. They say all is well that ends well. Yeah. Um, amen. Amen. All right. So again, I'm talking to V. Marcia Blair and uh, about her book on her story, uh, uh, Chosen. You can see pose right behind her head. And if you have not yet gotten your copy, it's time to get a copy because this is a riveting story. Uh, it's a synopsis of, of a real life story, but you can get the, the gist of what the real story is. All right. So, so things took a turn. Things took a turn. You came to America. I, I'm looking at to come into America, chapter five, and 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 give us give us give us a a, a little insight, a little insight of the coming to America story. Because um, I'll pinpoint a couple of things, but tell us, give us the, the the coming to America story. How that changed your life? How that impacted your life, negative and positive? Um, coming to America was was. Um for me, coming to America was looking forward to see my mom because my mom was already here. So I was coming to be with her. So for me, coming was just a great anticipation and what the great America has to offer. And, you know, because it's all there. It's for you to, if you want it, you go for it. I was afraid. And I think I mentioned that, um, you know, as Dawn came down and we traveled together, I was really sad because I was leaving my siblings and I didn't, I didn't want to leave them. You know, when you're leaving, you, you cry. And um, mm -hmm. I really, really missed them when I, when I left because, you know, I was young. So, so, of course, I missed them. My other sister, Michelle, was here, but she wasn't um, where I was. She was somewhere else. So we weren't together, so it wasn't like I have another sister. But, um, but um, you know, but coming to America, there's so many good, and there were so many not so good. Right. Right. Well, you know, that is, that's what real life is about. That's, that's, that's why one's story becomes fascinating. I always said everyone has a story and, and, and the good and the bad of one story is what becomes inspiring, what helps to transform other people's lives, what gives people hope. Um, because when one look at you now, one looks at you now and see what you have been through, where you're from and where, what God has done for you, that helps. That's yeah. what helps to make somebody's life, make somebody feel hopeless, even in the dark moments of their life. So, so, so that's why we, 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 we unfold a story. We don't tell half of the story, piece of the story. We tell the story as much as we want to hone that story. Yeah. And, and what I am talking to you about are what you have already written in your yeah. book. So this is all out in the public. I'm just oh. gleaning from yeah. from the book and and as i said some of the things that you have you have put in the book i i like i'd like you to 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 talk about that so in chapter 13 in, in page 13 on the coming to america i noticed um uh you you talked about this this gentleman who uh asked if he has been married and replied without the dictation ah. he had not oh yes and that must have been uh the the the, the story of stories devastation devastation yes you know 
growing up, all young girl wants to be married. Mm-hmm. When you look around and you see all your friends are getting married, you know, you're in church, of course. So you can't just run around and find somebody out there. So you want somebody who is safe, of course, and Christian and trustworthy. And I uh, I did. I met this um, this young man. Um, filled with sweet words and sweet talk. Could sweep you off your feet any minute. Because mm. <laughs> everything just is just wonderful. And of course, I did. I fell in love and... Um, he asked me to marry him. And I said, um, I would love for you to meet with my pastor first. So that, um, you know, that he could talk to you, get to know you, of course, because as a young girl growing up in the church, this is my pastor. So of course, I'm going to want you to meet and talk with my pastor. Mm -hmm. And I did. And I did. And we, we had a long a two-hour conversation, to be exact. I, I never forget. And and the question that, that stays with me, the question that stays with me was when um, my bishop asked him, have you ever been married? Okay. Yes. And his answer was no, never been married. So he meeting your pastor question ask have you ever been married and he says never never what was the story behind that the story behind that well the story behind that do we want to go all the way well i, I mean it's your story it's your it's story, story. It's, your, it's your story your, your journey story. and yeah. how god because it's, you know and again i i I'm, i want you to make you comfortable to say what you want to say about your story yeah, um, because you, well actually my story is to help someone that exactly is, that, that that is the reason why i share my story it's not always the glitter and the gold mm-hmm. you know you have to come come from that place you know god brought me from a long way and i want to share and help someone mm-hmm. help help a young lady help an elderly lady help someone in the church that not all that glitter is gold amen and, and i just want to, i want i just want to say this along with that um the real heartfelt brokenness disappointment rock bottom experiences those are the things that lift people up higher yes well that that's my testimony because what god does is uses your test to be your testimony and your messes to be your messages Mm -hmm. so with me i want to inspire someone and i want and i don't want my child my children um, the young ladies in church to even go through what I go through, learn from my mistake. Mm-hmm. I walked out, I call it stepping out from under the umbrella of God. And um, I did, I got pregnant. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I noticed I noticed you talked about that in, in the book um, and, and, and the devastation of that. And the, when did you find out the, you know, the, the time of finding out that this man wasn't really what he said he was. He said he wasn't married, but then what happened in the middle of the pregnancy? <clears throat> yes. Something has happened. Oh, yes. So even while um, speaking with my bishop for the two hours and the question and you sit and you listen, you sort of, um, you know, you go back and forth and you're like, hmm, something is a little off. Anyway... Do we ever listen to that small voice? We always ignore the small voice. And then um, what happened to us? We make the mistake. Yes, I did get pregnant. And I remember I was at school because even though you, you know, I came here with my high school diploma, for some reason, a GED sort of like goes a long way in America. So I was, I was, I went to um, EOC, it's called Equal Opportunity Center. Mm-hmm. And I was doing my, you know, doing my studies there. 
to sit in the GD exam. I remember one day I was in class. I was pregnant. I was um, six to seven months pregnant. And one of my classmates came to me and asked me, told me, someone's outside to see you. I said, someone's outside to see me. Wow. Okay. So I went outside. I went outside. I saw someone outside, a young lady. And she introduced herself to me and said, hi, my name is so-and-so, and I'm the wife of this young man, the same young man who told my bishop, who asked me to marry him and told him he wasn't married. Wow. Wow. I, I, I know, I, I, I see, I read your, your world started crumbling. Um, my world did crumble. I, 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 I didn't know I could make it. Wow. I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't know I could make it. So, in the book, you said the the part I have buried deep down for so long. Or, but if I can help somebody as a chosen woman of God, then my living will not be in vain. This was a time in my life when the transformation took place that led to my understanding of just how chosen I was, the calling of my life, and the realization that I serve a God who is not judgmental, but no. forgiving. Um, mm. I, and I'm not going to label that point, but I noticed that you talked about uh, what, were you, what were going through your mind. Yeah. Things that were going through your mind. Tell us so, what were going through your mind during that period and, and how God brought you through that. So, when I first got pregnant, the shame that I felt, the shame that I felt was unbearable. I couldn't tell anyone. And you know, pregnancy is something that you either carry or you get rid of because mm -hmm. one day it will come forth. Everyone will know. Right. I wasn't just going to church. I was actively involved in church. I, w I was actively involved in church and I got pregnant. How do I handle such a, such, such a mess? I was working in the city at that time. I take the train to Manhattan. And while, you know, while, while driving on the train to Manhattan, and you'll see the posters on the, on the, on the wall, because the posters are there, you know, with advertisement to tell you what you can and what can't do. And while I was sitting there, there's one that tell you how to have an abortion. Wow. Nobody would know what I did. No one but myself and God. So that's what was going through the back of your mind. That was going through the back of my mind because I was ashamed of what I did. And in the back of my mind, I was saying to myself, maybe if I just do this, then this would happen. No one would know. No one would, you know, I wouldn't be ashamed of what I did. Okay. And I wasn't comfortable. Not that there weren't anyone to speak to, but I wasn't um, free or comfortable to speak of it because it was so shameful in my eyes. But then, but then while you ponder those things and contemplate what you may or may not do, you got a word. I did. You got a word got from a the word. Lord. I got a word from the Lord. I got a word from the Lord. And and in my opinion, in my mind, some people might say, "Oh no 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 no, you could not get a word from the Lord in situation like that." <laughs> but but in that situation, you got a word from the Lord. What was that word that you got from the Lord, and how did that change your thinking? Oh, this is so hard. I went to church. They ha they were having a crusade. And the very day that I saw the advertisement and all those thoughts that were going through my mind, the shame, the agony, I remember the night they were having the crusade and I said, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to go to church. 
And I went and I sat close to the back because yes, I was pregnant. I was, you know, I was pregnant within myself. I am ashamed because I did something wrong and I knew that I did something wrong. And the preacher was preaching and she yelled, <laughs> not that it's, I don't know, maybe it's not the right way to do it, but when the Holy Ghost speak, there was no control. And she yelled through the mic. And she, she said, do not, yeah, she said, do not abort that child. Do not abort that child. And you felt that was a direct word from the Lord. That was a rhema. You took that personal. I, 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 I surely did. She pointed at me. Like, oh, she actually how, did point at you. How did you know that? How would you know? I, I said to myself, how, how, how? I didn't tell anybody what I was going through. She pointed at me. I looked around. Who was she talking to? You know, when somebody pointed at you, you try to play it off. Uh -huh. Like, who, who, who are you talking to? I, I turned around. That couldn't be me. Wow. Wow. I see, I see, I see your, your mom is still, is still asking, how did you handle that visit? When, when you got the breaking up that story, how, what did oh. you do with yourself? Where, what, how did you did handle I, that? Oh, that was a very hard time. Extremely hard time. I picked, I went back into my class. I picked up my stuff and I walked to the, to the square. I waited for the bus. I was crying like rivers of water flowing. Couldn't stop, couldn't control myself. I was, I was pregnant, of course. I was six to seven months pregnant. I, it was uncontrollable. I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't, I, I like, should I just kill myself? This, this is even worse. <laughs> Finding out that, that he was actually married, mm -hmm. very much married. And also he had children too. Um, I went home, I went home. One of our church brother, he saw me and you know, he asked me if I was okay. and. He stayed with me until the bus came. And when I went went home that day, it was so unbearable. I cried for almost five or six hours. And while I was just on the bed sobbing, sobbing, I heard a knock on my door. I heard a knock on my door. I didn't answer because I didn't want to speak to anyone at that time. The person was very persistent. And they knock again, and I didn't answer. And they knock again, and I looked through the window, the blinds, and I saw who it was. And I let her in. And if you read the book, you'll see who it is. Yeah, saw it's that. My friend, yes. And she stayed with me, and she hugged me, and she cried with me. She didn't come and said, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. She cried with me, she prayed with me, and she encouraged me. You know what I find fascinating about, about that? Um, and, and talking about the amazing wisdom of God and how he doesn't leave us by ourselves when we are in our down, down moments. Yeah. That, that you left class, you went home depressed, stressed, confused, perplexed. Uh, not knowing what's next, went went in to cry all by yourself, and and as the book says, um, somebody were were somebody was inspired, or moved, mm -hmm. or carried by the spirit, to come to your door to knock your door in this dark moment, mm -hmm. and and although you 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 decline opening the door, the person mm -hmm. would not leave. No. It's like Jacob wrestling and 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 i will not let you go until you bless me and then you open the door and realize that somebody saying either the lord told them or they felt the burden and the actually, need to come to find you 
actually she said she was at work and I came to her mind and something just told her, stop by my home. Stop by my home. I I I, I tell you, God, God, God just know how to do it. He, he he knows how to do it. That's amazing. You know, he knows how to do it. That's incredible. That is incredible. And, and here you are. And so the Lord told you from the preacher that that baby, if I can mm -hmm. see, that baby you are carrying has greatness in store. I'm quoting from the book. That baby you are carrying has greatness in mm -hmm. store. Her life is purpose-driven. Watch God work through her. Don't even think about aborting her. And now... <laughs> Tell us about the baby now. Tell us about the baby no. now who is no longer baby. No, she's not a baby anymore. Oh, my God. The, my greatest blessing, one of my greatest blessings. She is a preacher. She actually turned 30 in September. <laughs> to God be the glory. Wow. She is a minister also. A wow. licensed minister in the Church of God. Wow. She's a writer. She's an author. She has her own business. Oh wow! Look what I would have missed. Oh. Look what I would have missed if I had just gone through with um, the way I was feeling, the way the way how I felt, the shame that I felt, how unbearable. Oh my God. When I when I whenever I think back of that difficult time in my life and just how how God has stepped in each time and that is and that is how the book is called Chosen. A life ordained and purposed by God. Because who could it be? Who could it be? Wow. Um I, I um uh, it's amazing, and yes, as 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 we're reminded by my my wife, who is who is very much with us, that the book is of is available on Amazon. You can see it right behind her head, being posted right there. That's exactly how it looks on Amazon. <laughs> Chosen by V. Marcia Blair. That's her book. Chosen. As I said, um, I said to her when I read this book, I said, "Oh my God, this is raw." This is cut to the core. I mean, you didn't, you didn't, I mean, the whole story in all this detail is not there, but, but one who has any sense of reading and can understand a story can say, okay, okay, here are the highlights of, of my life. And boy, you need to get this book to read it. And I think you said that there is more coming later on too, right? Yes, they are more coming. This one also at um, Barnes & Noble. So an Apple iBook, or you know, you can get it there also. Okay, so some some people are just ordering their copy. I think my wife just ordered hers too. Even though I have mine, she's ordering hers because she want to have it as uh, you know as her own. Um, mm -hmm. I, my friends, I'm talking to I'm talking to V Marcia Blair, and her story is a riveting one. I I. I must apologize to the people who you might hear from some on the YouTube channel. It seemed like um, I was doing some testing the other day and I put my YouTube private, it looks like. So right now it's it's not going live on YouTube. But if anybody said they didn't see it and they only have YouTube, I promise you once I'm finished with this, I am going to have it. Uh, open on YouTube so it become available. So if anybody um, wants to watch it after YouTube afterward, we will. I'll make sure that it's public so that they can watch it and and share it and etc. I, I apologize so much for those who may be trying to get to get access uh, to YouTube. I just didn't um, um, pull it from private to public, and um, so that's unfortunate. Anyway, um, so now this beautiful young lady came into the world mm -hmm. and and even until now you're looking at it and said devil you are a liar yes you are a liar you know what and i and i look and i look i look back and and, I, and i'm gonna say this to you like i said to many of my guests um uh, we don't know we don't know how god designed our journey and 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 what 
what he has in store. And and I and I say this to my to my guests, you cannot and this is the point, one of these days God will unveil to you the mystery of your history. One of these days, God will unveil to you the mystery of your history. Because as you journey, it doesn't make any sense. It's complicated. You can't put the pieces together. But it's when you get to a certain point in your life that you look back and you can say, Wow, God, was that all that you were doing? Did you have to go through that to make this? And, and he's going to say, Yes. Because God doesn't always follow, you know, stick with the grains and, and follow the norms and, and do things how men would conclude is the perfect way to do it. Because he does things with, that it doesn't make any sense because he wants the glory when it comes out. And you look back now, he said, look at my daughter. My daughter, let me tell you. She watches over me like a hawk. <laughs> I can't imagine. No wind can blow next to her mom. <laughs> you know, she's always looking at the side. She doesn't say much, but I know she's looking. She's like my, my, one of my greatest protectors. I, 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 I'm telling you, it would have been such a loss. And, and I want to encourage a young lady to let them know that, listen, it, it, you do not have to go there. There is hope. There is hope. You, you know what I realized that um, um, V that people don't plan to do wrong, to do evil. N normally, people run into things, and it, and it changes your life, and you look back and you regret it. But sometimes, sometimes the things that God allow, He has purpose behind it because it is part of your journey we get surprises as when we look back at history in biblical times almost all almost all of god's children who had the heart of god who were designed for ministry uh you know from the mother's womb they still had moments like these that we can look back and 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 remind ourselves we are human and god knows that we are human and he takes your downfall what you consider and i'm looking what you consider to be a deception what I, you can what you consider was, to be a, it definitely was a deception but god turned exactly. it around what you consider to be a deception and a misfortune God turns it around into something Amen. glorious. Amen. And now it gives strength yes. to the testimony yes. of how amazing God is. I'm talking to V. Marcia Blair on Chosen. If you have not gotten her book, you have to read, you have to get the copy of that book and read a real, a real story a real story uh, i remember i looked in the book and you you actually talk about you know being scarred talk about the church the church mm -hmm. is is normally and one believe the church to be a place of uh like a, a place of refuge a place of comfort and consolation and hope mm -hmm. uh, where you lift up the fallen and strengthen the weak but you find it to be more of a, at least at some point a place of judgment and condemnation and yes we have yes, been there and seen that yeah yes it was it, it was it, it was really bad because um some people in life unforgiving unforgiving and always tend to bring back the hurt that you have mm -hmm. gone through your mistake uh, but when you make mistakes I'm, I'm so glad that god is not like man god is not like man he turns things around the the people who the people who thrives on the people who thrive on your on your mistakes are people who want to make you think they are better than you are. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. want to show you how how you have fallen to make themselves look strong. Mm -hmm. And I have learned that over the over the many many decades of of my life in ministry and watching people. Uh, but but when people when people won't f set you free what matters most is that god sets you free and and god still gets glory out of your life all right tell us now you that you move on from that you have your beautiful daughter you're you're now cherishing her and now what happened 
Mm. My beautiful daughter. And the love of my life that I that I met. Yeah, you you run, you're running, you're running, you're running into oh. this man now who was honest and oh my god, and, and somebody true. Would, somebody would say, "Look what the Lord has done. He brought me a prince. He he he, he literally brought me a prince, someone who loved me unconditionally, unconditionally. Didn't look at what happened in the past, but see a beautiful young lady." and fell in love and i love him world without it he's been good he's so good to me he's so good to our children he's a man of god that that's even more important i i noticed i noticed that um i noticed that you both are journeying together uh, i i i watched some of this and the, the 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 highlights of your journeying doing ministry right. uh, were you were you ordained together to something like that yes, or yes. yeah so we, we studied for uh, five years at manhattan bible institute we did all the you know the mip we did our ordained ministers license we are both together in ministry together in ministry and i, I said look and i said look at god I, I would raise my hand and join with you and say, look at God. Amazing. Amazing. Mm -hmm. You know what, what pops into my mind? I remember uh, when I think about people who judge others and condemn them, um, I, I remember, you know, uh, the Lord told Peter to rise, kill and eat. And Peter said, I don't eat things common or unclean. And the Lord said, no, 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 no. If I cleanse it, dear you. Yeah. Dare you call it common if I cleanse it? And what we what we sometimes reject is what God gets glory out of. Amen. 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 Life is ordained and purpose by God. I, I feel I feel a shout. I feel a shout is coming here. <laughs> uh, when, when, you know, you know, it comes back to uh, when we think about when I think of the goodness of Jesus yeah. and what He has done for me. Yeah. All right, so you know, my soul cries out, Hallelujah! hallelujah. All right, so you, this great man in your life, and then we are, we, are, um, we, then, then, then your life took this turn, mm. and and we're gonna get a little bit of time to talk about your own story, uh, because we're we're not covering your mother's story and your father's story because those are in your book that we could talk about them but we want to talk about your story your yeah. story of 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 being down your story of getting up your story of victory uh, your story of uh of, of uncertainty now becomes glorious as you look back and see what the lord brought you through and mm -hmm. what he's still taking you through yes so after the the wonderful wedding and all the glorious things that happened um i noticed that in all of in all of this uh, maybe you have to know that you are still you are still in the pursuit of educating yourself you are still in the pursuit of educating yourself um uh, uh and i love i love people who want to educate themselves yeah. i also i also noticed that you talked about something that you were scared about um, when your friend told you about it, uh, about amnesty, that's in the ah. book. <laughs> oh yes, amnesty. I don't know if anybody remember 1987. <laughs> I think it was Bill Clinton that did that amnesty, and my friend called me, and uh, in a in a Jamaican twang, and she said, "Me, you want go on December?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm like, what? Like, of course I want to go home December. Well, what are you talking about? And, you know, and just just to see, I, I went with her and God just sent people in my way to help me. They, if I need something, they provided it, you know, for it to go through. And, um, and yes, I was successful. I was able to go home. Wow. In December. Wow. So that was that was a quick thing happened. How yeah. okay, so tell 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 us about from the fear and um and uh, and and anxiety, anxiousness and uh, and being scared to now being filled with joy. Uh, how give us a timeline. How did that happen uh, from this moment to that moment? Uh, I found this on the web. That was that was Siri making mistake there, so we're gonna ignore Siri. <laughs> 
Well, you know, you know the fear it is um, to for someone to tell you about that, and you're still saying, "No, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it." Because if you do it, it I, immigration I, is going to get you. Right. Immigration is going to get you. And yeah. um, but but she was with me every step of the way, and um, you know, an attorney. She found the attorney. They helped to complete the papers. Um, my friend, I have a friend in Brooklyn where um, her friend, they, they gave me every, everything that I needed to make it happen. It was like in the midst of all of this, uh, there was this, there was God working it out, working it out. He was just working it out. And I just couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. I, I, I couldn't believe it. So so tell me when when you when you when you get that clearance and say I am actually going to Jamaica, I, I know I, I I'm I'm sensing it in a when when I when I the first I got a visa to come to to America right even I got my first visit as visa I I was I was scared I was kind of wondering one I'm wondering if it even though I have it I got it from the embassy I was kind of still wondering if it was real, you know I'm gonna get my first flight to come to america i wonder if i'm gonna make it to america and actually get out of an airplane into america that that kind of um uh, uh moment of disbelief if i would say uh you can i'm kind of doing it i have it but i'm i'm wondering if it if it's real and i and i'm imagining that you are thinking the same that i wonder if this is real I wonder if i go to make if, if i come back right i did i actually <laughs> did i really did I, 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 I really, really did. I, I was really skeptic, but but the the very thought of going down to see my sisters and brothers and there were some nephews, uh, little babies that were born when I was gone. So you know, like I didn't know them, right. and just to see my family, my aunts and and uncle, and as usual, who met me at the airport? My dad. He met me at the airport. You know, it, it was it, God. God turned things around and for our good, and it's just an awesome thing. Awesome. Amen. Amen. All okay. things, all, all, all is well that ends well. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And amen. I'm talking to V. Marcia Blair on her book Chosen, and 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 just a synopsis of her story. Yeah. I tell you, if you read this book. If you read this book, it will tell you a lot more about the real, the real struggles, the real ups and downs, the real moments of uncertainty. Mm. I'm telling you, I have one description for this, and I shared it with her and others who I've read, who I share with. This is really raw. It is really raw. Open, um, not, 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 um, ex ex what do I call it not expository not a complete uh detailed book because it would be a big one <laughs> if all the details were in there but you can read it and wait for the rest because she's gonna have an Funny. additional version to this uh, mm -hmm. uh, edition i think she's gonna do it in editions right yes. uh, editions i've oh. chosen <laughs> okay yes. All right, all right. So now, now we we know, and um, to my surprise, I saw that you were having real health issues personally. Yes, that's in the book to a certain extent. Tell yeah. us, tell us about how you get to the point of discovering that something was happening to your health. What was the discovery? How did you deal with it, um, and and how you come through? Because that's a story that I'm gonna let allow you to tell. I'm not gonna butt into it, but just tell us about your story when you got the story. Because people are terrified mm. when they hear this word, this c word. They say someone don't want to call it. They just say the c word, <laughs> c -word. Uh, because it is almost a death sentence for so many people. Um, uh, when you tell us about your discovery of that C word, your journey through it, where you are, how you got to where you are. Ah, uh, that, that, my journey with, with this, um, this illness that the Lord has been covering me and just carrying me through. 
where do I start? Five years ago, five years ago, I um, I went to Israel five years ago. And uh, while I was in Israel, I don't think I mentioned that part to you yet, uh, but if you read the book, you'll see. Mm -hmm. On my way to Israel, I started bleeding. I, I, I started bleeding. I, I, um, I said to myself, my goodness, and right through, and everyone, I think it's what, 12 hours? Is it 12 or 14? Don't want to exaggerate. Right through, right through. Anyway, anybody go to Israel, no youth. It's a lot of walking, a lot of walking. And I walk with, like the woman with the issue of blood. Wow. I walked, I walked, and yes, all of this was happening to me. I never complained. Um, beside my roommate, she was the only one know how 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 I was feeling at that time. And um, you know, so while in Israel, we were supposed it's time for baptism, hmm. and no, you can't go into water um, with 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 that going on. And the night before, we went shopping for our slippers. Because we want to make sure that we have something to wear while we're getting baptized. Mm -hmm. You know, and I said, listen, I don't think I'm going to get baptized. But they said, you know what? Still buy your slippers. Still come prepared. I went to bed the night. And my God, I woke up the morning. And the bleeding stopped. Oh, wow. The bleeding stopped. And I have not bled since that day, I oh. was able to be baptized. Really? <laughs> yes. So, so that's not in the book. I I don't think I, I, maybe I didn't even put I, that. I, in don't, I don't think I read that in the book. I, I didn't yes. read, I didn't read the Israel part in the book. So fascinating. Yeah. Yes. Fascinating. So that so that's a miracle. Right there, right up, right up front, right up front, and 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 um, my two roommates were like, wait. What's going on? Because they knew exactly what was going on. They knew how weak I was, but I was still pushing. And when they realized that everything stopped just before the baptism. Wow. Mm -hmm. And and it never came never came back. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh. So so you so you <laughs> you get your slippers you prepare yourself um I, I i'm just trying to 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 imagine the situation you were in mm -hmm. the opportunity that was coming up you not knowing how this was going to work out but you had the courage to say it was a just in case kind of thing uh, what, 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 what were you anticipating might happen overnight? Oh, I was really, really praying silently that some, like, you know, that it would really stop. I was praying silently. I didn't like speak it out, you know, but they said, I said to them, listen, things are going, it's really rough. They knew that because they couldn't see, you, you know, what was going on. And my, my two girlfriends says, let us still get, get everything prepared. And I said, yes, I am going to get everything prepared. When I woke up the morning and I took my shower and I saw, and I'm like, wait a minute, what in God's name is going on? Wow. It, it, I was overjoyed, overjoyed. Because wow. although I pray, I didn't lose faith. Uh, mind you, but I know what was going on, and I said, "My goodness!" You didn't lose faith, but you were realistic. I yes, right. Yes, I di I didn't lose faith. I was praying, but yes, that's the correct word. I was realistic. I, 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 I you know, God worked in these miraculous ways. Wow, it, it's power. To our, uh, oh my God! <sighs> on you know. Um, 
uh, I see this. I see this from. I see this from from an Esther standpoint. If I perish, I perish, but I'm gonna see the king. I, I, I see. I see it from the woman with the issue of blood standpoint. If I could only but touch the hem of his garment, I, I, and but but for that to happen, I'm gonna have to beat the odds. The yeah. odds against Jewish culture say I am not supposed to get out of the house mm. and not, let alone go among Jewish men. But I'm going to take a chance because if I could oh. only but trust Jesus oh, with yeah. this chance. Yeah. And boy, well, well, that is that is a biblical, that is of biblical proportion. That almost doesn't make any sense. How many times have you told that story and somebody tell you that, uh, no, they don't believe it? Every time I says it, they tell me it's it's not true. But I'm so glad that there's always a witness. God always <laughs> have a witness. Amen. And I have two. I have two. Not even one. Two. <laughs> in the in the presence of two or three witnesses, you could be stoned to death or you could you be set free, right? So yeah, witnesses are always good. Oh my goodness. I am talking to V Marcia Blair. Um, uh, our daughter that we have loved for for what forty plus years now, and uh, that we've known her, and uh, some of the story I've never known. I read it in her book and and was in awe as I read some of it, and um and she's giving me a little bit more detail that's in the book. That's why I'm telling you that if she would put all of these detail in the book, it would be a gigantic book to carry. But then it would be it would be something that you that you wouldn't want to let go. Uh, and I can't wait for the next edition uh, of adding to in more detail the story. You give us, you give us this synopsis of it. And I said, "Oh my God, where did this go?" Because just, just that to me, to me, what you just said about the Israel tri Israel trip, and and that experience, that in itself is a testimony of God's mighty moving power uh to bring to this moment okay so so tell us now uh we, we get to the israel that the 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 the, the issue ceased and and now where do you go you got baptized and what happened okay so we came back home and um and that was the same year 2016 16 2016 um we went to jamaica See, my friend just ordered your book there too. All right, yeah. yeah glory to God. A couple of my friends are ordering here. Good. Yeah. It's a great read. Yeah. Believe me, you, you're going to love to read this. And yeah. And uh, we went to Jamaica for, for a visit. We spent a good time there. And then I came back. And, you know, women, we do our yearly checkup with our doctors. Mm -hmm. I did a ultrasound and I did a pop snare. And um, everything was good. I remember my husband and I, we were brushing our teeth and we had breakfast and we were getting ready for, um, for church to run out. And my cell phone rang while I was in the bathroom. It was my doctor. And he called and he said, he called me by my name, the name that I don't use. <laughs> oh boy, and see somebody saying I'm next in line. I saw Helene Clark is next in line to get her a copy. So, all right, I love it. Just go oh, get your you. copy. Thank you so much. Um, you know, and he called me and he said to me, everything is good. I'll see you in a year. Okay. Just like that. And by the time he said that, we went to church. And the Wednesday of the same week, I noticed that I started feeling a little pain in my stomach. Then I noticed that my stomach started getting big. Hmm. And I said to myself, hmm, this can't be. What's going on? I don't travel with big stomach. And at the same time, I was preparing for our state women's conference. I remember you talk about that story. Go ahead. Yes. I, I was preparing. I was, I was rehearsing with the praise team. Very rigid. We had to... And even in, in while while I wasn't feeling well, I was still rehearsing. I went um, the same night. The set there was a Saturday night. That that was when I noticed that it got bigger, and I wasn't feeling well. I went to sing at a concert, <laughs> even though I wasn't feeling well. 
I went and I sang at a concert. My children took me. They said, Mom, you're not feeling well, and I really don't want to take you. But I said, I have to go. I, I promised. I went and I sang, and they sat outside in the, in the van, and they said, I'm not, I'm, I'm not leaving you. When you finish singing, you have to leave. So I sang, and then um, they did an encore. And I had to do two more songs before I came down. And I was still in pain, and my stomach was getting bigger by the minute. <laughs> You know, I remember. I remember you said in the book that um, that you you actually asked them to relieve you from the hospital, and oh, yes. and, and you will come back. <laughs> you will come I back did. over the weekend. I, I did because I was preparing for the women's the women's <laughs> camp conference, and for me, this is this is beyond um, the highlight of the year. And I, and I tell everybody, you know, we look forward to it. So you know, practice with the praise team. And I, when I went to the doctor. I went to the doctor the, the, um, the, the Monday morning and on my desk at work, I'm telling you, I wrote down everything I was going to do. I was going to do on the Monday. Nope, didn't happen. Almost a year later before I ended up back in the office. Anyway, let me not jump over. I, um, I was in the hospital because I had to, they, you know, they admitted me. I went in the morning for the, um, the x-ray to see what was going on why my stomach was getting so big and um they found out what was going on they didn't tell me what was going on they put me into a room after the x-ray on the scan <clears throat> my daughter my daughter Aaliyah, she she's a nurse so she came and because i was in the hospital in the, in the emergency room in one of those little rooms anyway Oh, time is going. You gotta hurry. No, no, no. You take your time. Take your time. We, we, we're gonna get your story. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna get your story. I just wanna before before we go, just remind friends if you have any of your friends or family saying that we can't find it on YouTube. I apologize. I seem like I put my YouTube channel on on private because I was doing some testing and didn't want it to go public. But tell them once we are finished, I will I will publish this this broadcast and they'll be able to watch it on youtube for the rest of their time <laughs> okay so you know um i was in the room and the doctors came in and they started asking me some questions and I, it so happened that i couldn't answer everything because i was still in pain and i wasn't feeling well right there they drew the conclusion that um well before that they took my daughter outside. They came in the room and they took her outside. And in the middle of the hallway, the doctor said to her, your mom has cancer and it spread all over her body. Yeah, I remember I read that piece. It spread all over her body. So they assumed that it's in my brain and it spread all over my body. Anyway, Aliyah cried outside before she came back into the room. And she came in and I said, what's wrong, what's wrong? And she said, mom, they said you have cancer. I said, okay, let's take this one step at a time. Anyway, they came back into my room and they noticed that I was very calm. I was very, very calm. And they, um, they, <laughs> they assumed right away that, that the, the cancer went to my brain, my brain. So now they want me to see all these people to see what was going on. So they thought the, the cancer was what it was a cause of your calm reaction. Yes. You weren't responding to to sad news. Yes, they, they <laughs> wanted me to start panic and act uh, crazy. Um, okay. out, well, for me, that would be out of character anyway. I mean, that is something to get really out of character for. But I I didn't feel that way. I felt a deep set of peace, and you know, I hugged Aaliyah, and then she called her dad and and call um, Chanel and, um, you know, her, her sister to come. And they, they both came. And by the time I looked, the hospital couldn't contain all of the people that was there. Wow. Uh, um, my entire family drove over. Uh, don't play with them. <laughs> they, don't, they don't play around. Um, my church family. It, it was just unbelievable. The doctors were asking, who's this person? Why is there so many people here for her? Anyway, 
I stayed in the hospital. They did find me a room, and, and while I was there, I had to beg my oncologist to let me out of the hospital <laughs> to go sing at the women's conference in Palo Alto. <laughs> I, I have still not gotten over that. I still have not gotten over that. That I, I still can't decipher how you... I have no words. I have no words. I have no words. I, I don't know what... Uh, who in their right mind uh, could put singing at a conference at such high priority that you ask for leave from the hospital after all this news and all this stomach problem to get out of here and go sing and then i promise i will come back i i, I did she said to me um <laughs> Ms. Blair, you know you have to promise me you're coming back right away i said yes i will i went and my god what the blessings of god and it was reverend barnett who was speaking that time too she was a, she was a speaker at the conference Oh, really? Yes, she oh, was. Oh, oh, wow. No wonder you wanted to go too, right? No wonder you really wanted to go. That too, but the, let me tell you, it's, it's an out-of-body experience when you're in the presence. Like, who am I talking to? The presence of God, you know, it's something else. I I couldn't, I didn't want to miss that opportunity. First of all, I, I rehearsed with my with the team and, and I was looking forward to it. And I'm like, listen, if I need to be anywhere, this is where I need to be. Not in the hospital. God still work miracles. And wow. I'm going for mine. And I went and they, they were off to a late start because my two girlfriends, they waited for me. They did not leave me. They waited for me. And when the doctor let me out, <laughs> they picked me up and they run all the way to Kalahari, Pennsylvania. Wow. That is incredible. <laughs> that is incredible. You are you are tough as nails, and and you are a woman of purpose indeed. Uh, that is not normal. I can tell you that. That is not normal. That is reason for the average person. Maybe ninety nine percent of anybody else would not have done what you did so that is incredible but then again some things you don't plan some things god does allow it or cause it you know and and, and here you are looking back and said all right so now you come back you you, you you've done you you've done your ministry duty yeah. you've come back to the hospital and now where we go came back to the hospital and um get prepared for my surgery you know because they have to do surgery um full hysterectomy the whole words um, the doctor said it was going to be a two and a half hour surgery. And two and a half hours turned to seven hours. Oh, Lord of mercy. Two and a half hours turned to seven wow. hours. Wow. Um, my family was outside. My mom, not my biological mom, my spiritual mom and 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 um, everyone, they were just waiting on pins and needles because they couldn't understand what was taking so long. Doctor said I bled out twice on the table. Wow. They thought they lost me. They lost me. And but God, wow. but 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 God. I said I. That's what I said. But God. Amazing. But God. Said, God's not true with me yet. No, I shall come forth as wow. pure gold. Wow. And I said, with God on my side, I'm going to make it. Listen, my friend, I'm talking to, to, to V. Marcia Blair about her book and her own story, Chosen, and, and, and her family. Uh, this is just, uh, we're just, we're just, <sighs> the book is so condensed. The book is condensed. I, I told my wife this is like a, a condensed copy of the story when I read it one night. I couldn't let it go. I read it one night uh, for about five hours. I, I, I just read this book um, and, and couldn't let it go. And I'm saying these, there are so many high points and real story 
synopsis in this book that you will want to read it i'm going i'm going to give her a chance to get a get a cup of water a cup of tea i'm going to give her a minute or two minutes break i'm going and, and then i come back we're going to continue on this conversation my friends stay right there because we're going to have a conversation hang in there We are back and continuing the story. I'm talking to Minister V. Marcia Blair on her book Chosen. And I'm I'm excited because a lot of people are are getting their copy while we speak, have ordered their copy while we speak. And I promise you, you will not regret getting a copy of this book. All that's going to happen after you get a copy of this book, you're going to ask for more where is the rest i promise you that's what you're gonna ask for where is the rest in more details that's the that's the book chosen it's right behind her head and you can see by v marcia blair available amazon and um uh, barnes and noble and mm -hmm. um it's have it, it's an um hard copy and in digital form as well all right so you better go get your copy my friends you will love it all right here we go all right so now we are where we are and i don't know maybe we're gonna come back another time and talk a little bit more later on you know because there's so much to your story as you continue the journey but but give us give us tell us what how did that go now you you got this this two hour plus surgery estimate turns to seven hours oh my god you you said you bled out twice they, they consider you bled twice out on the on the table uh, what what's the story that they told you afterward <clears throat> they told me um can you hear me yes i can hear you okay um eventually they told me that um the nodules were so far out that they were clipping and clipping and trying to get everything wow yes so by by doing that um you know 
<sighs> yes. So did they make any mistake by in the process of do they do they did, were they trying too hard? Did they um, get beyond where they expected? What happened? They they um well I think um she what she said, my doctor said she had to stop. She couldn't go any further. So what what we had to do was some rigid chemotherapy treatment. Oh wow. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day I went for treatment. I spent sometimes seven hours. Oh my in God. Sometimes sometime I go it's so it's so low that I can't even get treatment. <laughs> oh my Every God. Day. Oh my God. One, one of the most beautiful thing about it is when you have caring families, mm. my sisters and my brothers, my church family and friends, my, my children, they never leave me, my husband. So it's not like I was alone in there during those difficult times. It was hard, but I always have someone sitting with me. Wow. Yeah, wow. every every day. It, it was rough. It was really rough. How did how did your body hold up? I mean, you know, the, the support, the moral, the emotional, My, all that support is good. But but your body is going through it. How did your body hold up to go through all of that? My body didn't hold up. <laughs> my, my 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 body wanted to give up. I lost um, so much weight. Because you you know you I couldn't eat nothing right. nothing, nothing. Right. Right. I you know my my sister Judy she 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 she's um one of those people she makes sure that I do the right thing when it comes on to eating she'll get really upset with me but but but, but Judy's always you know and um, I think I spoke of my sister Sharon in the book right I saw that right yeah my sister Sharon left everything and she came. And she stayed with me, and and uh, you know she, she just she just took over. She fed me. She showered everything. Yeah, um, you know. But but what I'm saying is, it's good to have good people around you, mm -hmm. caring, con compassionate people around you. God bless you. God bless you. And uh, you've been through that. And did I did I read that you actually had a good period, and then and then the news came back again? Did I read? Okay. Yes, All right. So uh, I've been through this, been there, done that. I've God's been, been good yes. to me. Glory be to God in the highest for all he has done. And what yes. happened? So, yes, been through it. And then um, went into remission, started my life. Oh, you know, still go. Went back to church. Went back to church on my birthday, December 17th, I remember. Uh, we, it was such a glorious day when I went back to church that Sunday on December 17th. Hello, my birthday is December 17th, everyone. I hope you don't forget. <laughs> FYI. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I went back to church and it was awesome. Awesome to be back at church and to get back in, in the full swing of things. Um, whether it's preaching, whether it's directing choir, whether it's going out to sing or, you know, whatever it is for ministry, ministry. And I remember um, when I preached, I preached a sermon, Empowering Hope. And that was, that was, I think that's what, that was, am I mixing it up? Is it Empowering Hope or Faith? One of them. And I preached a Sunday. And then, and then Monday I had to go back and do a CAT scan. And, you know, my husband and I went to the CT scan. And two days later, I got the call that the cancer returned. Oh, Lord. That the cancer returned. And that um, I have to start that, that rigid treatment. I'm going to ask you what happened to your human spirit at that moment. Because we are human. We know God is good and he can do miracles, but from a human perspective, how did the human in you respond to the news? 
just being human, no spirituality no, now. No, no, you no, don't know. No, 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 no. Uh, you know, Monday without, morning. With, with, without anointing and spiritual no, unction, no, no. you know. Monday morning, I was listening to a young lady from Jamaica spoke on the Zoom room, and I think she said something about you can, you can, ask God a question, but don't question God. <laughs> Okay, okay, uh, that's left. That's left for interpretation, but we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, because hmm. you know, there are times when I had to go deep, and I said, "My God, I, you know, like, what have I done wrong? Mm. You know, what? Why is this wicked thing coming back again? Just get my life back. Just went back out to work." Get back in the, the, you know, the full of things and and trying to focus and move on, only to get that news. My husband, he's he's always he's so calm, he's so calm. He brings that utterly calmness over over my spirit, and which which keeps me smiling. And I'm really thank, I'm really thankful for him. Really thankful for him. God bless him. Yeah. So you know, and then um went back and. So two oncologists, so they said to me, this is what we're going to do this time. We're going to do the, do, um, do the surgery. And afterwards, what we're going to do is put the chemo into, into my body. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how, how it works, mm. <laughs> whatever, you know, and then let it... Um, <clears throat> saturate and kill the well you know it killed the good and the bad cells right oh, yeah, so right yeah uh, yeah so it killed the good and the bad cells um <clears throat> and i said okay it so what they said they're going to give me a temp a, a bag so they mark mark you up mark me up and so on anyway we went back to <clears throat> the hospital in manhattan sloan and you know my siblings came over that early morning and we all drove down and we went in. No, I I wasn't I wasn't afraid. I wasn't afraid. I, I think one of my greatest fear um would have been not not being there for my family. Mm -hmm. That 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 you know, because I, I really do love them and I and I wanna I wanna be around and I always say to, to the Lord, what are you doing with me, um, you know, with my life at this time? But I never give up. I really, really, really never. I do faith over fear. I, I did, um, we call it pray without ceasing, mm -hmm. persistent prevailing prior. Wow. I, didn't, I did not lose hope. I did not lose hope. I know spirituality. I did not lose hope. Wow. I did not lose hope. When they when they wheeled me in for the second surgery, and my sister Nadine, um, she's also a nurse. She came in, went in with me, and I looked at them, and I saw the fear in their eyes. And you know, and and I think I wrote what my sister Judy said. You know, she she said it's going to be all right. Anyway, the doctor again said this was going to be a two and a half. Two was it a five hour surgery? Yeah, this one was going to be a five hour surgery. But in two and a half hours, he came back out and he said he got everything. That's wow. what he said. <laughs> and I always say to myself, <laughs> the doctors are always saying they got everything. Yeah. And I went back through so they didn't have to put the chemotherapy in my body afterward, but they were going to do like an infusion of the treatment inside. So what I had to do was I had to do chemotherapy again every day. Oh, dear Lord. Yeah. So I went back through the whole series, um, losing hair, everything. Thank God for wigs. Isn't it beautiful? I know, right? Uh, well, thank <laughs> God. You know, a woman can be beautiful as easy as, as, as cheese, right? <laughs> Uh, transition like, from that to this in a moment. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. You know, but um, I, I don't fussy about hair. I just go and do what, what I need to do. I, I, I don't let 
um, things bother me anymore. Well, I know I noticed that that you know you you were you were everywhere doing everything <laughs> as if as if it didn't matter. You were just like I said, wow, look at look at look at my daughter, my God, yeah. and said, boy, she's so bold, she's so brave, yeah. she's not intimidated, she's not mm -hmm. um, you know um, uh, gonna put herself in isolation and stay behind the no. scene. In, no. Despite all of that, kudos to you. You are blessed with with something special. Thank you. Thank you. You know, God has given me that strength. And I'm really thankful because I know many who have gone or is going through similar circumstances like me. But awesome God, really awesome God for the strength that he has given me. May, and, may, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was going to ask you where you are now and where, what things exactly. are, you know, so you can go ahead and go ahead and... Okay. Because I, so, I have one more question for you and I'm just cutting things short because, you know, I have one more question that um that I want to ask you, but go ahead and wrap that one up if you want. Okay. So, <clears throat> so where I am now, um, in July, after my CAT scan, the last CAT scan I did, I was... um. I was doing chemotherapy three times per week. That per is, month. Is, that's July gone here? Yes, three times per month. So each week I go in for treatment. And then I get one week break. And after that um, scan, I'm doing one treatment per month. So um, today I had chemotherapy. Oh, really? Yes. Wow, I could have never, t I couldn't tell that for you sure. You look like what I've been through. Ah, uh, no, 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 I see no sign of it. I said to God be the glory. To God be the glory indeed. Uh, my friends, you're looking at V. Marcia Blair with her book chosen, and looking at her tonight is an indication, a testament to that very fact. She did chemo today. I should. You are incredible. You are exceptional. You are uniquely special and different. I don't know what, but I, I'm giving you the I'm giving you all the thumbs that I have on the toes up. Thank you so much, God. <laughs> I, I, I'm 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 telling you. And how do I? Maybe you like that, but how did I come up with that name for the book? In my sleep, I woke up and I heard a voice that chosen. Wow. I went back to sleep and I got the second half, a life ordained and purposed by God. Wow. That's it. Whew. We are, we're continuing to pray for you because God, we don't know what is in the mind of God. Huh. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and we don't know what God's plans are, but he knows. Yeah. And, and, and so far, so good. We, you know, we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt and give him the glory because he understands and um, he's behind the scene working, not making noise like everybody else. Mm -hmm. But boy, is he working? Is he working? Uh, we, we, the, the story hasn't ended. No. There's more to this story that mm -hmm. I am sure now that you have this first conversation with me and you're comfortable, I'm sure you'll be, you'll be ready to talk to me a, a little bit more later on on something we're going to get you. But, but I want to ask you, anything else you want to say on that before I, before I switch to my last question? Because I, I don't want to exhaust you, especially you have done chemo today. I don't want to keep you more than two hours, which I is long enough. mom just asked what kind of cancer it is. Oh, she just asked that. Okay. Well, you can answer your mom. I sure can. It's ovarian cancer. Okay, and that, that's one of the bad ones too, right? It is because um, for women, it, it's, it's like you don't know until it happens. Mm. Yeah, it, that, is, that is so sad. I, I heard that. I heard you can't, you know, it just, it, it happens. And um, it really uh, you can't detect it or prepare for it or discover yeah. it. You know, like early detection is like once you find it out, it's like, okay, it's bad already. It, it, so, you know, like I said before, I went and I did the ultrasound, the pop, and everything came back perfect. And the doctor said, um, See you next year. In a year. And, and, by and in, the a couple, time, in a couple of weeks, you were, you were in trouble. In a couple, the Wednesday, I started feeling sick. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the Wednesday after he said that. Yeah. Yeah. Doctors are doctors are limited. They're human. They can't yeah. know the secret things, mm -hmm. but God does. 
Exactly. I put, you know, I, I said to people when they say, why do you smile? So I said, because I will do what the doctor said, because God gave them knowledge. Right. But I do serve a bigger God. And whatsoever he does, he does it well in his time. Amen. Amen. You are an amazing woman, but I have one, one other biggie to ask you. Um, one of the big, it's in the book, so I'm not coming up with something behind the scenes. And uh, maybe this is going to shock some people who are listening online that this is also part of your experience. I, I noticed that you said in your book, you have had five, say the rest. I have had five miscarriages. Okay, pause everybody. Pause and listen to this. V. Marcia Blair is saying to you, in as part of her journey and her story, she has had five miscarriages. Uh, I'm done. I, I I don't know what to say on that. I, I don't know how to say on that. But you can you can help us to get a grasp on the inner circles of your mind and the, how you process this and how you're still going on uh, you know I, I noticed that you said um I, I don't know if it's the last one was was the most devastating because so you can tell us the story and you can give us a synopsis of that I'll, I'll speak of the last one indeed it was the most devastating one and and it's like every year on the birthday that that happened it's like you know you could really go into a form of um, depression if you allow it to. Mm -hmm. This was a boy, and his uh, name would have been Samuel, like my husband. Wow. wow. And, and so it really hurt. It really hurt. And even though I go through that, I have never told anyone until I wrote it in my book. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. You kept all of those locked up between you and your husband or your family circle. Yeah. And 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 what what has what has your close friends said to you? Church family who are next to you, close, rubbing shoulder, shoulder to you. What had some of them said to you having read that in your book? I know that they were right there during that time and had no clue. Huh. Mm. Well, how were you able to disguise all of that emotionally, uh, physically? How did you do that? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I did say in my book, in a room filled with a hundred people, a whole lot of us have gone through that situation. Oh, man. We just don't speak of it. We just don't speak of it. We. Mm. We, we, we keep it. I don't know if it's, it's sometimes we may feel like a form of shame. Mm -hmm. So we do not speak of it. Oh, yeah. And um, I, I, I want, like I, you know, I was speaking to our women's ministry president and I said to her, there are certain things that I would like to have discussions with, with our ladies on miscarriages. It's something that's worth discussing because it's an unspoken thing, but many have gone through it and are facing such a rough time. But I want to help somebody. As I said, the book, as you said, um, the version of it, there are more to come, but I can inspire somebody. I want to help somebody, uh, uh, a young lady, a youth, a, a woman, whoever it is, you know, God has put it in me. What I went through, I want to be able to share and let someone know that there is hope. There is hope in the midst of the storm. There is nothing greater than a, an amazing story of a trial, testing, victory, mishaps, downfalls, uh, going down and coming up again. Those are the real stories. Those are stories that are not theoretical. 
uh, those are not stories that you know some 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 analysts come up with some uh, something to give you some some stats or say uh, or some projections or some estimates or some uh, uh, possibilities mm -hmm. probabilities are you know these those are real personal experiences nothing is more profound than when somebody look at somebody who has been who had been through a lot and come out on the other side and say here is what my journey looked like felt like what i experienced being a human uh, i am not a i'm not a spiritual being i am human uh, I am flesh and blood. I have emotions just like everybody else. And so my, when you sit down to talk to somebody, they will listen. That's And that's the power. And, and, and sometimes, you know, I have a friend of mine. I have a friend of mine um, uh, who, norm, who likes to say, I, you know, I really don't want God to trust me that much. I don't want God to believe in me that much. I don't want God to, uh, to you know, I, I don't want to go through all of these things. I don't want God to put me at that place where he, he trusts me that much. Like he said, have you considered my servant Job that there's nobody like him? Uh, you know, <laughs> I, know if, I know if you had the power to carve your way out, this is not how you would carve it. No. But, but you know, um, the, the struggles of life makes you stronger. Mm. You makes are you amazing. And just telling your story, I'm believing, is giving you strength and giving you power. Yes. Giving you power. Telling your story gives you power because you're putting out in the open... Uh, your own journey of perseverance, ups and down, and victory, tough, hard battles that you have fought and won, uh, downfalls, get up and run again, those are profound. And when you when you tell that from experience, and you and and especially when you hear people coming back to you and said your story helps me. Um, uh, in Psalm 4, in Psalm 119, 49 to 50, uh, you know, uh, two of my favorite verses, David said, remember the word that you have given unto your servant. He said, the word that you have spoken to me caused me to hope. Mm -hmm. It okay. caused me to hope and it gives me comfort in my infirmities and it quickens me. Mm -hmm. I, I'm thinking that your story that you're telling tonight, not just in the book, but verbally, audibly, that somebody can actually sit down and listen, it's going to be a transforming force. And I'm sure if people who read this and listen to this have any means of contacting you, you're going to hear from some people uh, about what it has done for their lives. And God has used that to put something on the record that miracles still happen, yes. victory still happen. You can go down and come up again. The Bible said the good man fall on rise seven times. Yes. I, I don't know many times you have left to go, but mm. but 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 God bless you. God mm. bless you, uh, my friends. I'm talking to V Marcia Blair, a friend, daughter of mine, my wife and I that we have known for forty plus years yeah. and, and 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 i'm just sharing this emo this high emotional moment with her of a journey of struggles battles and victories and i'm rejoicing with you in the goodness of god and and i can't wait to see what the lord is going to do uh, because the song said, please be patient with me because God is not true with me yet. When he gets right. true with me, I'm going to come forth as pure gold. Amen. I am waiting to see when you are fully processed and come out on the other side as pure gold Amen. and say, look at me. You've done, you said chemo today, uh, chemo, you did, did chemo today and you're on here. She did chemo today. Did you hear that? She did chemo today and she's on this program telling you of the goodness of God. What more can you ask for? Yes. That is incredible. I am mm -hmm. not going to exhaust you anymore. 
I have heard a lot and and this door is not closed. This door is not closed. We're going to come back at some other time and say, how are you doing now, my dear? How how has your last few months been? You know, uh, mm -hmm. when you finish with your chemo and you said, mm -hmm. I'm looking back, we're going to have another conversation on that. My friends, mm -hmm. what's your last word? What do you want to say? What do you want to say is your last word to share with anybody before you go? What what word do you want to leave with somebody? I want to tell someone tonight that trust God through your circumstances. It's not how we want it to be. It's not where we want to go. But when it happens, trust God that he will see you through. And I think um, in the first time when I got sick, one of my goddaughter came over and she said, are you going to make it? And I said to her, even if the healing doesn't come mm -hmm. on this side of life, I am still healed. Mm -hmm. So Amen. my encouragement is not to give up. Keep the faith. Amen. You are chosen. My and, and healing is not always what we design it and preconceive it to be. Um, uh, healing is not always external it can be discovered by the eyes yes. uh, sometimes healing comes in the heart and the soul of the man because he finds peace with God in all of this and I'm not I'm not declaring Job's stories on you but I but 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 Job said even if God slay me even still I'm even going yeah. to trust him because I still yeah. know that my Redeemer lives. And in spite of, despite of all of this, beyond this, beyond yeah. this. Even if, even if I am Lord. not going to give up. I'm Amen. still going to sing. I'm still going to preach. And I'm still going to do ministry for God. And I think, I think you are more impactful now than you have ever been. Because just for others to look at you and know your story make it even more powerful thank you you're a blessing thank you so much. you're a source of inspiration thank you, uh, for you are your life-changing miracle of yourself and your testimony is a testament to that and i and i pray this story is gonna stay here on on on, on facebook for the next generation as long as facebook exists and my friends i'm again i'm apologizing because i did not remember that i may have put my youtube channel on private because i was doing some testing behind the scene but i promise you when i'm finished here i'm going to have this so tell all of your friends who said we wanted to see it on youtube tell them to go back and look and relive it in a little bit from now i will make it public on youtube god bless you god yes. bless you thank, thank you I for you. joining thank and, for and don't, don't forget the book don't forget the book if you're just yes. joining us get the book. <laughs> if get you're just joining if you're just joining us this is the book chosen thank chosen you. she doesn't have the hair on her head but she's still <laughs> chosen right Amen. so that's the same person you're looking at there okay that's the same yes. person you're looking at there get the yep. book you, it, it's gonna it's gonna transform your life and make you think deeper about how you fight battles and how you come out victorious great uh -huh. stories see my daughter just put up something there <laughs> to come out uh, come uh, out this saturday december 3rd 21 hudson okay so she's is, is an it okay come out this saturday december 3rd 21 hudson street yonkers new york where you can purchase your own book and have it signed, of course. I, I like to talk about getting it from the author because when you get it from the author, you get more than the book. You get the author's <laughs> autograph and it becomes personal and you can put that down for your children and your children's children. All right, all right, all right, all right. So God much. bless those who are not too near to come to Yonkers. You can still get yours on Amazon. But if you're in the, the New York metro area, hey, stop by and get um, your copy. As a matter of fact, say, I, saw, I saw a lot of my friends um, commenting and my family. I want to say thank you. Thank you for uh, my co-worker, Penny, too. I saw her. I want to say thank you for coming on and supporting me. And thank you, Dad, for having me. And mom, thank you. 
And I, bless I, um, Sister Webster, Sister Melka, everyone. I see you, Tasia. Thank you so much. I am so delighted to have you. I wish it was on other circumstances, but you know what? I'm rejoicing in your testimony. Thank I'm rejoicing you. and I'm celebrating in your testimony. I wish you had not gone through what you've been through, but God allows it. He yes. didn't uh, it not necessarily cause it, but he allows it. And if he allows something, he has purpose. Yes. He has purpose and his purpose doesn't make sense to the human mind because we don't want to go through the things that God allows us to go to because we rather it was nice and smooth and easy. Yes. Uh, but that's not how God sees it. Sometimes he bring you through the worst situation because he's going to use it to lift you up. Um, I, I think I put one of my posts that I sent out just recently that if God didn't prevent something in your life, he is using it for a purpose, either to make you stronger, bring you closer to him, or, or, or make you more powerful when it's all over, give you a greater testimony. So we're going to use God's wisdom that, Amen. hey, I don't know what your plan is, God, but whatever it is, I'm going to wait on you. Amen. Amen. Remember to follow me on Facebook and subscribe to my YouTube channel when it comes out if you haven't done so. And I'm also on TikTok. ORB Ministries everywhere. We're taking ministry wherever it can go. So make sure you link up with me because as my, my ads say, you never know what's next or who will join the conversation. And I want to play this. I want to play this before, before I say goodbye because I want everybody to get a grasp on this because there's a panel coming up where we're going to be talking about some of the most hot topics in church history story watch this and mm -hmm. come back i say goodbye to my friend Yes, my friend, the truth matters. And I'm telling you, on the December 7th, coming up next week, the next week, Wednesday night, December 7th, the panel will be debuting and we're going to take up one of the hottest topics around. And the one we're going to pick up on, how should the church deal with the LGBTQ community? That's one we're going to pick up on next week, Wednesday. This panel is going to be hot. So make sure mark your calendars to join us. How should the church deal with the LGBTQ community? That's going to be a hot one. Sister V? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> God bless you. I love you. I love you for so long and I love you even more. God bless you. You are just a source of strength and God bless you as you bless others. This is your first time and I guarantee if the Lord spears us, there's going to be another. There's going to be another. My friends on, online here, thank you for your participation. Thank you for uh, your, your, your thoughts. Thank you for responding. Thank you for everything that you have done in just making this an interacting night, um, sharing in my friend's story. And there goes what your mom said, all those hearts of love for you. <laughs> right <Yeah. back. laughs> Have yourself a good night, my friends. I will Thank see you, you next week on Let's Talk with the Dark. Stay tuned and don't forget to tell your friends that they're going to find it on YouTube once we get this all clear and downloaded. Ardine is there. Cause is right there too. God bless you, everybody. Congratulations. I will see you next time. You're going to stay with me there. Sister V will say goodbye offline after we say bye to everybody. And bye you still want to type, you want to type, you want to type more stuff and say and you want to keep us here because you love the story. More is coming. Get the book, read it, digest it, and get ready for the next volume or the next edition. I will see you next week. Peace be unto you. Love and blessings. All right, everybody's excited. I will see you again. Have a great night, everybody.
Well, thank you for checking in on ORB Ministries. I trust that you will share with your friends, subscribe, hit the bell for notification, and stay tuned because you never know what's next or who will join the conversation.